This is Twit. Google really knows how to throw a party or a developer conference. Honestly, if you've ever been to Google I.O. before, you might have a hard time finding a difference between the two. It's a blast, to say the least. One of my favorite parts of Google I.O. is perusing the sandbox tents. Those are themed areas that showcase some of the more interesting examples of cutting-edge uses of its newest technology. So I've compiled a list of my nine favorite discoveries while roaming through the Google I.O. sandboxes. Number one, a robot made this poster for me. That's right, this unique piece of art was designed for me alone inside the Google Assistant tent uh, where they were showcasing the Assistant SDK for hardware devices. This giant plotter that was armed with four color markers was connected to an Assistant speaker below it, meaning anyone could bark a command like, draw purple squares, and the plotter would respond. And in the end, you walked away with a robotically creative work of art. Number two, in the accessibility tent, Google showed off its liftware utensil line to make eating easier for those who might be suffering from conditions like Parkinson's disease. The handle of this liftware steady spoon has a sensor inside that detects rapid hand tremor movements and then activates two motors to counteract the shaking that will then stabilize the spoon in use. They also showed the liftware level that's aimed at those with limited hand and arm mobility that actually keeps the spoon level at all times regardless of of how you move it. Number three, also in the accessibility tent was a demonstration of the new Lookout app for Pixel devices, newly announced on Oreo or Android P. Launching this summer, Lookout speaks aloud what it sees, helping those with visual impairments hear and understand the world around them. It can even read text from a book or announce where the exit sign is located in the room. Shift three at 12 o'clock. Number four, similar to Lookout, is Google's updated AR app. That's Google Lens. The update, which releases by the end of this month, has a new active scanning mode for recognizing objects that it sees on the fly and then pulling back search results that match to them. So if you think that blouse is to die for, but you don't know where to find it, just point lens at it and you might get lucky or at the very least find a knockoff that's nearly as good. Number five, also in the AR tent was a gameplay demonstration of one of Google's new announcements for AR Core called Cloud Anchor. This is how AR can become a shared experience on multiple devices. In this case, two separate phones connect to and interact with the same virtual objects in the surrounding space, making something like this two-player versus style catapult game possible. It was a ton of fun to play. Number six, and also utilizing Cloud Anchors, is an app called Just a Line that kind of felt a little like tilt brush in the sense that you can draw on the virtual space that surrounds you in a three-dimensional canvas. The Cloud Anchors come into play by allowing anyone with a phone to participate in the same space. Everyone's just kind of scribbling to fill in the area and you can walk around and get up close. I'm super pumped to see what third-party developers do with this Cloud Anchor technology. Number seven, in the experiments tent, something called Move Mirror. There's a tiny phone camera that's driving a human-sized screen. You, a human, stand in front of the phone camera and strike a pose, any pose, and the TensorFlow pattern matching algorithm will locate images from its 90,000 image library that match your pose. They even created for me a short animated GIF to prove that I am indeed a big nerd. Number eight. Also in the experiment's tent was this nifty piece of hardware called NSynth Super. NSynth, or Neurosynthesizer, uses neural networks to combine the qualities of four distinct sounds into entirely new models, depending on where your finger is dragged on the XY control surface. It's powered by a Raspberry Pi underneath, they told me, but it's not yet a consumer product, though everything needed to build one is open source. I'm thinking maybe something for know-how. Uh, by the way, you know what I want for my birthday. And finally, number nine was found in the artificial intelligence tent, and it's something you can play with right now, and you'll want to because it's really fun. It's a game called Symantris. There's actually a couple of games, but it's based on a slightly modified version of Google's smart reply technology used to create this game that highlights a word that's then stacked on top of other words, and your job is to name the first word that comes to your mind based on that highlighted word. If you draw a good enough connection between the two words, that word is then eliminated and you get to continue, but you don't want that stack to get too tall. Do a search for Symantris and say goodbye to your day. My name is Jason Howell and you can find me talking all about Google and Android on, well, all about Android. 
and Tech News Weekly here on twit.tv.